Okay, good morning, or good afternoon, good a good evening, whatever time it is. Uh, where you are today for me is June the 8th, and the exercise I'm going to walk through this morning is exercise, this morning for me, is uh, lab 0302. Uh, normally, um, got a student in participating actively today, that is not the case. So it is just me, so I'm just going to run through this exercise. Now, um, Yesterday, I did a coding walkthrough using joy and a lot of theory around validation. And that's essentially what this lab is, is implementing joy on our uh, issue tracker. And so we get some server side validation. And so I want to first off, make sure that my issue tracker is pulled and up to date and it looks like it is. So now I want to open it up in Visual Studio Code. And on yesterday, I, uh, so if you want to go ahead and have these requirements pulled up um, in the, and you're a student in this class, you can do that. It's out there on Google Drive. And so we're starting on exercise one, 40 points, exercise two, or 60 points for this lab grade. Um, so I'm going to pull this off to the side over here so, so we can go through the requirements. And um, let me just boot up my server as is, npm run start dev to make sure it's still in an operational uh, mode. We're hitting our database, we're pinging our database, and if I go to maybe list all users, um, we've got all of our users that we have added. And so, <clears throat> the first uh, thing I'll probably need to do is install joy and with npm install joi and uh, the first thing we start doing is validating an object ID in the uh, on the user route so if we get user by by ID we want to validate that with joy and so yesterday one thing that we did is we actually made our first little middleware so I We'll actually um, create a, a new file in middleware, and I believe we called it validid.js. And we wrote some logic in here yesterday um, that I'd like to walk through a little bit, a little bit more in detail today, just a little bit more detail than was offered yesterday. Um, now, now, this file, um, is something that we did in the crud dog walker i can actually pull up valid id um, and this is the code that we wrote yesterday i can literally um, copy and paste now um, turns out I, even my import we don't bring in joy here um, because we don't use any of its methods um, so this is the valid ID. And one thing that kind of um, threw me off a little bit yesterday that, that maybe maybe you picked up on if you were listening to the lecture, you know, line four. Okay, this is a syntax for declaring a function in JavaScript. So we're making a function called valid ID that takes in one parameter. Okay, now this line is, is um, it's a little confusing. It's worth noting that, you know, when you're accessing an object and its properties, one way of doing that is with dot notation. Another way of doing that is with angle brackets. And if you go back to uh, free code camp and the, the learning that we did there, you might remember that. And what we're doing on line seven ultimately is we're creating a request, uh, we're creating a uh, uh, um, property that belongs to the request object. So we're adding a new property to the request object. We are modifying the request object and adding a property to it. Okay, and so we are essentially creating a new property belonging to the request object that's going to be rec, you know, sub, and then whatever string value that we pass into it. So we can pass in 
um, user ID or walker ID or we can pass in any sort of string ID. Um, and then we're assigning that equal to an object ID that comes from Mongo. That's again, that's converting the rec.params dot um, parameter name that we send in. And so um, basically the, the data that you're sending in via the URL, that is stored right here. And we, we kind of have worked with that data. Um, this is another way, instead of using the dot notation, you have to use the bracket notation here because we don't know the name of the parameter. So when you don't know the name of the parameter, you have to use the brackets. And so that's why we use the brackets in these two cases. Notice we, we don't use the brackets here, but we do use the brackets here. So, so we're creating a new property that belongs to the request object and assigning that, that property is going to be an object ID. And then that's, then we, we basically say that's the end of this method. Okay. And if you can't convert this, this will throw an exception. We catch that exception and say, Hey, back to the client, there's a problem. Now, the thing that threw me off a little bit yesterday is this piece right here. We are returning an anonymous function. JavaScript in JavaScript, you can pass date, you can pass functions into functions and you can return functions out of functions. And so that's the part that I, I kind of didn't explain very clearly was this line right here. We are in fact returning a function that the reason we have these three pieces here is because this function that we're returning is modifying our request object. So we're sending the request object back to wherever it's called. And here you're saying we're modifying that. And in this, in this middleware, we can, we have the option of modifying the request object. We can modify the response object. Okay. So, so anything that we modify in this middleware, we can send back and ha and work with that modified object. We can modify request object. We can modify the response object. And so that's something that middleware can do. Middleware can modify the request object. Middleware can modify the response object. And that's why in, in middleware, you see this kind of syntax where we're returning this function with these modified, potentially modified objects. And so, um, hopefully that makes sense. And, and I wanted to offer that explanation a little bit better than I did yesterday. And, and I hope, I hope if you listen to that, I hope that that makes some sense. Um, the other middleware function that we can, that we implemented yesterday was a uh, valid, uh, what did we call it? Valid, da, 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 valid body. That's right. We were validating the request dot body. So we valid body JS. And if I open that up in notepad, this is copy and pasteable. Once you write this one time. Okay, again, this one takes in a schema that we defined with joy. That's why we don't import joy here. We import joy over there. Um, and here, the schema, we can call a validate method. I thought because we needed the validate method, but we needed to import joy, but we don't. Um, so here we, we validate our request.body. And if there's an error, we send back the error. Otherwise, um, We should, you know, you should be able to keep the request body the same. That's essentially what this does. This keeps the request body the same. We set the validation result equal to the value um, that, that is sent back from the, the value property, which is an object. Basically, this says the request body is the request body. Um, don't change it because it's good. It's basically what that does. Um, so presumably, we could get by without even this line. Um, and then we call next again, next just returns focus back to, uh, the next middleware. And if there's no more middleware, it goes back to the function that, you know, that, that you were about to run anyway. So, uh, valid ID, valid, uh, valid body. Those are our two middlewares that we wrote. 
Now, back to the lab. We do need to import Joy over here, so let's bring it in over here. Import capital J-O-I from Joy. Okay, we it basically says leave the list undone, and it says validate the user ID. So let's expand that, and we're gonna do that with our middleware, valid ID. Now we need to bring that in. Notice it recognizes um, where valid ID function is called from. Right now I haven't imported that, but if I hit tab, notice I hit tab and it brings in valid ID from my middleware. And what we do is we pa pass in this variable that's coming in from the parameter, user ID, user ID as such, comma, okay? And if it's not a valid ID, it should say user ID, user ID is not a valid object ID, and that's this message right here. Parameter name was not a valid object ID. And so that, that route is now refactored. We have refactored that to um, catch errors, and if it's a bad ID, then it's a bad ID. Let's go to find user by ID. Let's spit that out. That is a valid ID. If I give it something that's not a valid object ID, I would expect not a valid object ID. Now, if I give it something that doesn't exist, um, it says user not found. And so if I go back and find a valid object ID, paste that in, there's a valid object ID. If I cut it short, and I add that back, five, there it goes, user not found. So it's a valid object ID, it can be converted to an object ID, but it's not found, so, um, so voila. That is the first five points on that lab. The next 10 points, it says the following data must be provided by rec.body. So now, um, this is on the register route. So on the add user, you're gonna notice we have email, password, given, family, role, and full name. Um, I'm gonna take off full name off of the requirement because we can assume if there's a given in a family we can we can concatenate that string um, and then just do the one last piece there. So I'm, I'm actually removing that requirement. Now let's define our first schema. And so we're gonna go back into the user JS and get the user by ID is good. Let's make our first schema. So we're gonna say uh, const new user schema equals joy.object. And what do we need? We need email property that is a joy.email. Uh, joy method dot required comma we need a password field that is a joy dot string let's just do <clears throat> minimum of four characters and you can make your um, passwords is complex, you know, special characters. Again, it's probably worth getting the joy docs open. Um, so let's go to the joy.dev site, get started with joy. And if I go down to string, um, you know, maybe we also trim the white space. Don't forget your parentheses. Trim some white space on the ends. Uh, let's see, max length. Good enough for password. Given name. Given name is a joy string, at least one character, required, 
family name, joy, string, and role. It says role must be one of the previously defined roles. So there are certain acceptable roles, and I want to show you one way of going about that. Okay, so we're going to accept. And you know what I'm also going to do? I'm also going to trim these. Trim, min, and trim, min. Okay, so for our roles, joy.string, dot, you can dot trim um, if you want to fit, force it to be lowercase you can do that uh, in other words take whatever they give you take whatever data they give you and put it in lowercase and then let's compare it with these valid values so developer is a valid value quality analyst YST Okay. And so that would be how we say okay, these are the acceptable valid values that we're going to put in for our roles. Okay, so in the lab, uh, this is on the register route. And so duh, 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 this is our register route. We get to call our valid body. And we're going to pass in the schema, which is new user schema. And we're going to pass in valid ID as well. No, no valid ID. It is just the new user schema. Okay, now valid body is not defined, and that's because I didn't hit my tab. So check this out. If I delete that, valid body tab, that'll do my import for me. And now I can say new user schema. And there's my, there's my import on valid body. Put a comma. And valid body, again, calling next if it's... Uh, if it's valid, you just keep the body basically the same. And so, now I did say that I'm going to combine the full name, and I, I've done that here. The full name is the given name and the family name. I must have done that yesterday. Um, so I no longer need to provide full name. So let's let's take out full name because that's fine. Let's just take out role. No, let's let's take out another. Let's take out email. So here's our register new user. This should throw a validation 5003. Let's see what my error is. It's not running. Let's clear the screen. npm run start dev. Don't forget to start your server. And e uh, joy.email is not a function, of course. Um, joy.string.email. Now we're up and running. And let's go back here. And, and this, is, uh, this is correct. We are getting the joy error message that says, hey, mess email is required. Now let's put in a role that doesn't exist. Skateboarder. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Role must be one of the following. So let's say role is a developer, and we can capital doesn't matter. Should should lowercase it for us. Uh, new user added, and so. There's our new user, Julia Bradshaw, who is a developer. And 
there is um, uh, so in other words, this is working. Um, leave off a password, and it's going to say password is required. So we're getting server-side validation via via Joy. Um, and it is, if it sends back some data, you get the status of 400 right here, status of 400 bad request. Um, very good. Okay, so login, we need a login schema, which is an email and a password. This is uh, easily doable now that we have a good example. Login schema equals joy.object. This is going to be our Uh, email property okay uh, joy string email um, should we not trim this string sure Let's trim both of those. And let's also say, hey, we got the password already. Let's just say password is four characters. And come on down. We are done with register. Let's go to login. Uh, valid body. Login schema. Okay, I'm getting a address already in use um, port. Let's close it down. Sometimes that'll happen. Let's run it. See if it tells me the same thing. It does address already in use. And so what I do at this point is I go into my processes and I look to see if there's any node servers up and running. Seems like something can hang. So let me just close and close Postman. Then we'll reopen it. <clears throat> I need to pin. Visual Studio Code. So I like having my Visual Studio Code pinned to the taskbar. And now, if I boot it up, now we're running. Get hung up there. Okay, open up Postman. And let's log in without a password. So, login user without a password. Uh, this is definitely Joy validation, password required. Let's log in with just a uh, username, not an email, saying it must be a valid email. Let's log in with a short password. Okay, so you're seeing all the validation there working on the password, and if I do put in good credentials, welcome back. So you can see this, once you kind of get the baseline down, this can actually go pretty quickly and it isn't all that hard. The main thing is kind of understanding a little bit of this middleware stuff that we haven't done before. And frankly, this makes it very easy, right? This is a lot easier than writing, you know, 15 if else statements, in my humble opinion. So I'm a fan of this, of this library. Let's register that. Next up is the update user. So let's kind of minimize this user schema. Let's minimize the login schema. Now this one, we need to validate the body and the object ID. So that's the login. 
here's the update the user ID. So we're going to say valid ID, pass in user ID, and we're going to say valid body, and we're going to pass in our schema that we have yet to create. And so let's say const update user schema. Now the thing on this one is that it's it's optional, right? So they're not going to be required. Um, so this is going to be a joy object. There's going to be an email that's optional joy dot string dot trim dot minimum of one character dot email. I think we said min of four on our password. Like literally, I think you can copy this and take off the required. Um, so let's just say given name, role. I'll just copy that over take off the required, keep the comma, take off the required, keep the comma. I did just notice that my role is not required, so let's just do dot required on my role. Put a comma there, uh, yeah. But it's optional here. Okay, so there's my update user schema. And let's pass that into valid body, update user schema. And let's go update user. We're going to need to first get an object ID of a user. So I'm a developer. I'm going to change my role to something else. So let's put in here and let's change my role to something that should not be accepted. Role must be one of those things. User updated. There we go. User updated. Um, so we validated that that's all optional. We can pick a role. Um, let's see that our object ID validation is working. That is correct. Again, if I copy my ID back in, that's all we needed to do. So we now have a update user. And then on the delete, we are just validating the ID. So that's the router put. Here's router delete. It's really simple. It's the benefit of code reuse, right? So see a little bit of uh, benefit here. Now you're going to see we can use valid ID on user IDs, but the way we wrote it is flexible. We can write it on dog IDs and walker IDs and product IDs and yada, yada, yada. So that's delete, and that is the updating of the user using joy. Now, updating the bugs. <clears throat> so let's close user. Let's close valid ID. Let's close valid body. Closing our database. And... Rankin, let me go to my web app and my live version. So here's my issue tracker live. If I go to my app engine dashboard, I can get the URL of my web app. So 
this is the live on the internet version. If I go to list all users, there I could see Gudmestead has been changed, changed, and here's my new user, Julia Bradshaw, who's a developer. So all good. Updating the bug API, listing the bugs. Okay, so here's bug. List is unedited. Let's bring in Joy. Bug ID, of course, we need to say valid ID. Now I'll see if it's smart enough to figure it out. Interesting that it was smart enough to figure it out last time. Not sure what I'm doing differently. So let's bring in the import manually. So we're going to import valid ID from dot dot slash dot dot slash middleware slash valid ID. Now, now we can say valid ID, bug ID, comma, pretty straightforward. Let's close our user routes here. Close, 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 update user, delete user. Did I refactor delete user? Yeah, I just didn't test it all that thoroughly because we've already tested that function on others. Okay, um, bug ID, valid ID, bug ID. Demonstrated that, that works. Um, okay, new bug, title description and steps to reproduce. So before our routes, let's just put a little const new bug schema joy dot object with a title a description same difference and a steps to reproduce. Your mileage may vary if you want to change the requirements on that, but there's my new bug schema. And let's pass in a valid body. New bug schema. Doesn't know what valid body is. Let's bring in valid body. Import valid body from sometimes IntelliSense picks it up, sometimes it doesn't. Let's go here, new bug bugs. Create new bug 5003. Leave off the title. Get an error. Leave off the description. Get an error. Leave that off. Get an error. Otherwise, the data is good. Next is the update bug, which takes both. So here's my new bug schema. Um, const update bug. These are all optional. Um, so let's go here and valid body passing it the update bug scheme. I'm going to test something on that and valid ID.
passing it in the uh, string bug ID, comma, oops, comma. And on the update bug schema, I want to pass in an empty string. So let's see, update bug by ID. Let's list all bugs. Let's go here, grab my last bug right here. Update bug by ID. That's why you got to save these routes. If you're not saving them and grouping them, it just saves a ton of time. Update bug by ID. And let's just pass in an empty string for the title. That should error out. There we go. Title's not allowed to be empty. Um, so let's put in this is a new title. Actually, you can even put in the letter T. Success. List all bugs. It's at least one, one character because that's what we said. This is a bug title. Now I'm going to say um, just, you know, I think this goes without saying, but um, at this point, but maybe not. Um, the data that you put into your database is uh, like this is a bug title is obviously a terrible bug title. It's an easy bug title, but it's not, you know, uh, very good for demonstration purposes. And so the point of this project ultimately is to help you get a job. And so if you put a bunch of dummy data in and it's truly dumb data, like this is a bug title, um, you know, that's going to make your application look less polished, I'll, I'll call it. And so, um, you know, be hesitant of using dummy data unless you know you're going to go back and fix it and update it and, you know, get it more polished. You want this application to be polished. And so I'll, you know, application crashing uh, on, on new item. You know, just something that looks kind of real, right? Just makes it look a little bit more polished. You know, I, many a students put in dummy data and then when it's like, hey, time to show off the final project, it's full of dumb data that's, again, not gonna look good to a potential employer. A good project can be the difference between you landing a job or not landing a job. You can impress an employer with a good, clean, polished, professional project. So don't put in dummy data. Uh, especially for um, for the final um, on your portfolio. So that's updating bug. What about classify? So classify is next. Also, you can see I did a lot of debugging when I was building this, and so you might take these debugs out if if you're no longer having the problems. Like I'm noticing this is coming from my app database on my update bug. So if I go back into my database file and I go to update bug, you know, I know that these are, are no longer needed so I can find my debug DB and you know, take them out because they shouldn't be needed at this point. Now I'm not taking that out. I'm not taking that out. Uh, there's also console tables that we can take out. Point is, um, there's a little more polishing I could do on this file. Classify, classify. The bug ID must be accepted as the path parameter. Okay, so we need to validate the ID and we need a classification. So that's a pretty straightforward schema. needs to be one of the previously defined classifications. So we kind of learned how to do that with our users. Um, and so we'll do that again here.
classification joy dot string dot trim dot dot lower case dot valid and we said approved just looking up the values that were duplicate These were the accepted classifications. And let's do valid ID, bug ID, and valid body, classify bug schema, comma. Okay, so let's go to classify bug. I'm going to copy that bug ID. Classify bug. Let's paste that ID in. And cheese. Okay, no good. Um, let's make it required. If I didn't make it required, Required. Let's make it required. So leaving it off. Classification is required. Leaving it an empty string. Classification needs to be one of those. Unclassified, bug classified. List all bugs. And Classified, unclassified, classified on today's date. Okay, back to the lab. That's classify. Okay, we get the next one, which is the assign. And if we look at the assign. We get a bug ID here, but we get a user ID here. Okay, so we need a bug ID and we need a user ID. Now one thing I would notice here, when we assign a bug to a user, we are updating a bug currently, but you might also choose to update the user. Remember, uh, the user has an array of assigned bugs and so um, right now, every operation that we do is kind of like one database operation, but literally all you would have to do in addition to um, classifying a bug, you could also update a user with the bug information, right? So one route could ultimately call two database operations. Okay, because when you classify a bug, you, you, you put a user on the bug side, but you might also put a bug on the user side. And so that's something that we're not currently doing, but, but I think in a finished product you would do that um, to meet those requirements. Now, back to the validation. So we have a bug ID that's coming across. Oh, I'm sorry, that's on the assign, not on classify. Same difference. Um, we get a bug ID here. So we're going to valid ID that. And valid body, because the user ID is coming on on the body. Now what I haven't been doing, and I'm just now realizing that, is refactoring out all my if else's. Um, because I'm, I'm using joy to do a lot of my validation. Um, what are you showing me here? Um, this is what I want, yes. I don't want to see that. Let's classify bug, okay. Um, so we, we actually have some duplicate validation going on here. Um, not necessarily uh, a problem, but could be cleaned up. 
like many things. Okay, we're validating the bug ID. We also need to valid body this, get a schema. <coughs> So let's make the schema. Keeps giving me these little, I must be clicking the wrong, I must be clicking the green, that's what I'm doing. This is, this little green bar is showing me what's new that's not checked in on Git. Okay. Uh, this will be my market is required. And we go down here, valid body, pass it the assigned bug schema. So let's see, we've got a bug, so let's list all bugs. Let's pick our latest bug, paste that there, and then let's get a user. Let's get that user's ID and paste it right there. Now I'm going to delete the five and click send, and we get an error now. Um, that crashed the application because um, we couldn't convert that into a, a object ID, which is the result of not catching that error that we do with our It passed our valid body, but ultimately still crashed because it's not a valid ID on the user side. Um, let's run our server again. Let's paste that number back in and assign it. And we should see it is assigned. So the code is working as we wrote it, and there's a sign two. The question is, do we want to fix that? And One thought, I wonder, right there so it doesn't recognize it right there so that doesn't work um, and I it's middleware so you can't call it there hmm let's 
because I didn't put try catches around my database calls, which um, if I try catch this, now uh, this is going to give me some scoping issues. Uh, so if I make that a let, so I declare it outside of the block. Because ultimately that those IDs are being sent over, assigned to user IDs going over to our database, get user by ID, and that's where it's trying to convert to an object ID, and that's where it's crashing. And so wrap that in a try catch. And now if I go back and do that, now we get, hey, that doesn't work. Not so crashing. I think because this is an asynchronous operation, um, it's still that's the reason why it might still be crashing. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it shouldn't be too hard to pass in valid user IDs. Um, and so um, I'm not going to get tripped up on that for now. Uh, you know, you think about this, where do you get the user ID from? Well, you're reading it from a drop-down list. This isn't something the user is typing in. A lot of times you want to be concerned with the data that the user is typing in. If you're getting this from a drop-down list, you know, the user is going to see the, the names that you can assign it to, and then those names are going to come from the database with their user IDs, so it's not like you're going to leave a, a number off. Um, so it's just not you know, the main things you want to validate less than user IDs, in my opinion, is going to be user input. And the user doesn't input this. This comes right out of a database and re put into the database. So, um, so that was a sign. That's working. Let's reboot this app. Assign. Finally, close. Looks like we need to validate the ID. and closed. So we need a schema for that to make sure that closed must be boolean, true or false. Oh, I took that out. We'll, we'll go about body, pass that back in. Um, so this takes a different schema, closed schema. And there's going to be a closed property. Again, let's hit the joy docs. Chat GPT, I was researching that error. Okay. Joy docs, joy. Joy.dev, get started. Boolean, joy.boolean, pretty straightforward. Okay, close schema, valid ID, valid body. Closed schema, pick on our bug, list all bugs, OK, 
copy that bug. Let's click on close bug. Let's tell that bug to close. Let's leave that off. Closed is required. Let's put in closed. Let's put in the letter A. Must be Boolean. Let's put in F for false. Not happy. Let's type in false. Closed capital C ibs. Closed. Closed. Field is required. funny it accepts true but if closed is false is like it's not there I that's funny so we're gonna mark it as just uh, today I learned that's not okay enjoy uh, if we mark it as boolean if I say T no if I leave an empty string no if I say false now Closed field is still required. No, it's not the required that's giving me the problem. Wait a minute. Closed schema, closed schema. Okay, um, a little bit more. Let's look at Boolean a little bit more. Uh, let's see. to get this to work the way I want it to. I'm going to add uh, a valid, similar to what I did before, of true and false. Now, Well, after a little troubleshooting, I was able to work around it um, by changing it into a string and just accepting true or false. A um, little bit of a workaround, um, but ultimately it is required. It's true or false. Don't love it, but it is a solution. Um, so if I put an F, it's not going to allow it. If I put in true, close this true. If I list all my bugs, you just get a closed in a string true instead of a Boolean true. The other thing is, you know, if you have a bug and it doesn't say closed of true, I, I got it working with Boolean true, but I couldn't get it working with Boolean false. But it's assumed that a bug's not closed unless you see it's true, but I'm not going to worry about that. It's I got a string true or string false. Um, yeah, that little joy validation on Boolean was, was being tricky because it was saying, hey, close is required, but then they were saying close to false, and so I think there was a conflict there. Um, but 
nonetheless, that's the end of that lab. And that's uh, introduction to joy.